Welcome back to Tanya in 5. Today we recap letter 25 of book 4 of Tanya Igeret HaKodesh. This letter is another one of those letters that uh, use lots of Kabbalistic language and as we've done in the past we're going to avoid getting into the technical mystical levels that he addresses and rather focus on the content and main message he's trying to share. Now there is a book which collects teachings of the Baal Shem Tov and in there it says that the presence of God manifests in a non-Jew that might disturb someone during his prayer and the objective is that the one praying dig deeper find new strengths ignore the disturbance and pray with even more intensity now there were those who challenged this statement uh, and it seems from the letter somewhat uh, aggressively how could the Baal Shem Tov possibly say that God is manifest in a non-Jew who's disturbing the prayer? So the Altarbe explains that they misunderstood. It's not manifestation, but rather investment, concealed within the non-Jew rather than manifest. The difference being manifestation implies that godliness is revealed here, and that's not the case. We're talking about a non-Jew who's disturbing a Jewish prayer, but uh, invested and enclosed within that yes. So explains the Alter Rebbe. In Book 2 of Tanya, Chapter 1 and 2, the Alter Rebbe explained at length that in order for everything in this world to be, the fact that there's a blade of grass, the tree, the human being, the animal, everything that exists must be brought into existence every moment by God. If God were to stop creating any particular creation, then that particular creation would revert back to the nothingness that it started with before God created it. Now, the author actually quotes quite a bit of those two chapters, and we're not going to repeat that here, uh, where he explains at length why it is, logically speaking, how and why it is that God has to constantly recreate everything that exists. You can refer back to the videos of book two of Tanya if you want to look at that in more detail. But for now, just the bottom line. If something exists, it's because right here, right now, God is investing energy in it to bring it into being. And therefore, if there is a non-Jew standing in front of me right now disturbing me from prayer, then that non-Jew has divine energy invested in him to bring him into being. And the ability that he has to disturb me is the result of the fact that God is willing it into existence now and there's divine energy that brings that non-Jew into being here and now. Now, the only question is, to what degree is Godliness revealed in that creation? Right? So for that, there's an intense system of concealments, spiritual concealments. There's divine energy at the top, transparently godly, and as the divine energy goes through the system of filters and concealments and contractions, it, the divine energy gets condensed and concealed to the point that it can animate something which in its outward appearance is in opposition to God, such as the non-Jew disturbing a prayer. But in reality, in that being, there is divine energy that is bringing it into being at this very moment. And therefore, if there is a disturbance to my prayer, I should think about that itself. Say, how is it that there's something disturbing my prayer? Well, it's because God's bringing it into being right now. So what does God want from me if this thing is disturbing me and God's bringing it into being right now? It's almost as if God is disturbing me through this concealment and through this external disturbance of the non-Jew or whoever it is or whatever it is. And by thinking about that, I realized that, hey, the reason why God's doing that is because he wants me to dig deeper, find a deeper intensity in my prayer and really concentrate deeper so that my prayer is even more intense than it was before the disturbance. And in this way, my prayer is elevated and I elevate that disturbance. Because that disturbance was only created to get me to dig deeper and find deeper intensity. And here I did. And by fulfilling the purpose for which that disturbance was created, I've actually elevated the disturbance, ironically. Based on this, the author explains something else incredible. He says, this is the reason why anger is such a terrible thing, to the point that our sages compare it to idol worship. Because if something negative happens to me, even someone, another human being, who has free choice, chooses to cause harm to me, 
at the end of the day. That human being is being brought into being right here, right now by God. The capacity that that person has to harm me is being brought into being right here, right now by God. And therefore, if I'm getting harmed, it's because God wants me to get harmed. Why am I being angry at that person? Well, it's true that person has free choice and therefore that person is judged accordingly and would have to pay for whatever damages they uh, inflicted. But the damage I received, the harm I received, that's ordained by God. And if this person were to choose not to harm me as he ought to have, then God would find some other way to get me the harm because I deserve it if I got it because God's bringing it into being now. So why be angry? Anger implies that I deny the fact that God's bringing this into being to me right here, right now. The takeaway from all of this is everything that happens to us, everything, is a message directly from God because that thing which is happening to you is being brought into being by God here and now. And therefore, there's a message. Even if that thing that's being brought into being is a challenge that seems in its appearances could be completely negative, it's still being brought into being by God right now and has a message for me. And if there's nothing good I can take out of it, then the message there is dig deeper, find deeper strength, focus with greater intensity on what you have to do, connect to God even deeper, and in this way elevate yourself and elevate the challenge that brought that negativity to you. Looking forward to seeing you when we conclude letter 26.